Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, everyone who's just joining. You can see the numbers rocketing up there. Just wait a minute or so until we hit 4.50 and then we'll get started. Hello, people in the chat. Welcome. Welcome to Xpolingua Online. Welcome to my talk. I am TJ. Um, I work at Chatterbug. It would be great to hear in the chat uh, where some of you are watching from. I'm, uh, I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. Um, someone from Lisbon, hello. From Switzerland, wow, Germany all over the place. Very cool. I'm originally from England, um, right up north in, in Newcastle. Some of you might be able to hear that in, in my slight Geordie accent. <laughs> Spanien, hello. <laughs> Colombia, wow, Belarus, what a mixture. Great to see you all. Good stuff. Okay, then we got uh, 4.15. I think we can get started. If you just bear with me for a moment, I'll share my screen with you. And then we can start. Okay, maybe you can give me a thumbs up in the chat if you can see my screen properly. Can see it, good stuff. All right, cool. So uh, today I am going to talk about something that I think is really cool uh, and really exciting for the language learning community. It's a new medium for learning a language. Um, and as tempting as it is for me right now to continue building tension around what this thing might be, I've only got about 10 minutes, so I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, okay, our new app, Chatterbug Streams, allows you to learn languages through interactive live streams. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about why we think live streaming is an effective new tool for language learners. Um, but once I've done that, I'm going to hand things up over to our fantastic German live streamer, Max, and he is going to present an actual Chatterbug live stream, especially for Expolingua attendees. Um, so I'll be casting this directly into the Zoom room. Um, so you don't have to go anywhere. You can watch it right here. Um, but if you do want to interact with the stream, if you want to do quizzes, polls, contribute to the chat, all that good stuff, uh, I would strongly suggest you download the Chatterbug Streams app on your phone and you watch the stream there. Um, we're actually giving Expolingua attendees one month for free uh, by signing up over our special link. Uh, I will post that in the chat now. Well, I think actually my colleague Megan's already done that. So yeah, go to the chat, you'll find the link. Um, it is a subscription, um, but you could just simply sign up, um, watch today's stream and then cancel your subscription, you won't be charged a thing and you'd have a month to do that. So if you do want to head to the chat, you'll find the link and um, that'll let you create an account in your browser. Um, then you just got to download the app, sign in with the same details, um, make sure you choose German and you'll see the live stream right there at the top. It's called Expo Lingua Special. So you've got about 10 minutes or so to do that before Max starts. So with that said, why live streaming? Um, those who are familiar already with our company, Chatterbook, might know that our focus has always been learning languages through those who speak them, human beings. Uh, and that's why we believe so strongly in our original product, our still existing product, uh, Chatterbook Live Lessons, um, basically does what it says on the tin, lets you do one-on-one -on -one video lessons with native speaking tutors. Pretty sure some of you have already tried that out before. So about a year ago, we sat down to think about how we might create a slightly more approachable offering for language learners who might not feel quite committed enough or quite confident enough to do one-on-one -on -one lessons as we offer with the other product. Um, and when we did that, we asked ourselves the question, how do we create something like that while still staying true to this human-focused vision that we have? Um, a lot of the existing apps in this space, the more approachable apps, I'm pretty sure you know who I'm referring to, rely quite heavily on flashcards, computer-generated voices. So 
robots, essentially, um, and games that you play with your thumb. We don't think that's very human. So as an alternative, you might turn to YouTube. There's a ton of humans on YouTube making videos of them speaking languages, and that's fantastic. But I'm sure the majority of you watching today have searched YouTube before looking for language learning videos, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. Searching for consistent, pedagogically backed content, which is at your learning level, is difficult. Send you down a bit of a YouTube rabbit hole, in my opinion. Um, and then once you find the content, uh, it's all passive consumption. There's no connection with the person who's in front of the camera. It's not really how we think languages are learned either. And that's exactly the problem that we think streams solves. Streaming is content live, allows us to inject real-time interaction into the experience. So as I was saying before, quizzes, polls, chat, uh, live vocab cards that pop up exactly when the word is being spoken. Uh, all the stuff you can see on your, your screen here, it's really, really cool. And seeing the language spoken as it is in real time by a real human being means that none of the nuance is lost as it is when, for example, listening to a robot speaking to you or typing words into your phone. And we just happen at Chatterbug to have a fantastic group of linguists, former teachers, language experts, who day in, day out are making sure that this content that, that we're streaming is pedagogically sound and accurately leveled. It's really good stuff. So having said that, the stream you're about to watch Max host might remind you more of something you might usually expect to see on YouTube or Instagram or along those lines than it does a classical language lesson as you may be expecting. And there's good reason for this. Our aim is to make content that our viewers actually want to watch, not just because you want to learn from it, but in the same way that you would do when you log onto your favorite social media platform or onto YouTube to watch content. And with me saying this, you might be tempted to say, but TJ, social media and YouTube vlogging are all the rage these days. For example, we've seen the rise of language learning influences in, in our field, for example. Um, I'm sure a couple of them are at this conference. So hello, if you're a language influencer. Um, so aren't you just jumping on the viral bandwagon and trying to, teach con uh, trying to teach languages through this content? And I would say to you, yeah, we are doing that. But of course, we thought about it a bit deeper than that. So I want to introduce one of the theories that informs our thinking around streams just really quickly. I'm sure at least a bunch of you who are watching today proudly call yourselves language nerds. Um, I'm, I know I call myself one. Um, and if so, you might have heard of this guy before. Stephen Krashen is his name. Uh, he was a linguist who came up with the input hypothesis theory for learning languages. Um, we could probably do about five talks at Expo Lingua uh, just on this one theory. Uh, but what Krashen basically says in a nutshell is that people learn languages when they're concerned about the messages they're saying or their understanding, or what he calls comprehensible input. Stay with me. Uh, in other words, effective language learning doesn't actually require extensive conscious learning drilling like you might do when learning philosophy, for example, uh, from a book or learning how to uh, play a piece of music, for example. He says it's simply about exposure to the language at a level that the learner can understand. And what he actually says is the level should be just above what the learner can understand for optimal conditions for improving your knowledge of the language. Very interesting stuff. And that's the theory that we think really well underpins the effectiveness of streams. We're basically creating comprehensible input, in the words of Krashen, by streaming compelling, well-leveled content that our viewers actually want to watch and they can interact with it in real time. So in that way, you could say streams is less explicitly about the language that we're teaching and more about the stories that we're telling in the streams. And as Krashen might argue, 
That's how languages are learned effectively. So I hope I managed to make you feel excited about what we're doing here with Chatterbug Streams. But if that wasn't quite enough, uh, let's tune into a real Chatterbug Stream hosted by Max, as promised. Um, now, while I figure out how to share my devices screen with those of you watching through Zoom, um, anyone who's got the app, anyone who's signed up, as I said before, um, I'd encourage you to jump into the app now. Um, click on the live stream at the top. As I said, um, Expo Lingua Special. You'll see Max's face on the front of it. Um, and I will give him the go ahead to start. So just bear with me for one moment. Okay, maybe you can tell me in the chat whether you can see the screen of my device. Let me know. Good stuff. All right, I'm going to disappear and uh, welcome Max. Hallo Leute und herzlich willkommen. Es ist Zeit für einen Chatterbug Stream. Mein Name ist Max Roberts und los geht's. Hello and welcome everyone. Great to see some of you in the chat already. Hello, hello, hello. Hello even viewers from Canada. Great to uh, great to see you. Excellent. Uh, and Big, big shout out to any of my Expo Lingua viewers watching. I'm very excited to uh, share a stream with you today. So today we are looking at six stages of language learning and how to describe them in German. So before we get into the German, I would love to know, what is your experience of language learning? Is it frustrating, rewarding, challenging, exciting, or all of the above? Um, and while you answer that, uh, hallo Inda, hallo Stephanie, hallo Maddie, uh, grüßt uh, grüßt euch uh, Elia Sack, Maria Eve, Antonia, Lorena, Megan. Hello, great to see you all. Herzlich willkommen. Um, and it looks like most of you are saying language is either challenging or all of the above. Uh, absolutely, I can relate to this as well with my language learning experience. Uh, so today we're looking at expressions and idioms to describe your experience in the German language. And what I love in the German language is how expressive some of the words can be. Like a single word in German is a full sentence in English. So we will explore that coming up. But first I thought we would start with a sentence and that is Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Der Bahnhof is the train station. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. I only understand train station. I only understand train station. Hmm, what on earth could this mean, Max? Well, I'm going to let you have a guess. What do you think Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof means? Uh, and then we'll have a look. So do you think it means you are confused and didn't understand? You understand a language that no one knew you did? Or you understand more of a foreign language than you thought? Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Uh, very, very good, everyone. Straight in there with a lot of correct answers, actually. Um, it means pretty much you were confused and didn't understand. My experience of this, I'm a fluent English and German speaker. I've never had any problem understanding German until I went to Switzerland. And in a McDonald's, I said, Ich hätte gern einen Burger, bitte. Uh, and the woman replied and 
my face dropped because I had no idea what she said to me. Of course, in Switzerland, they have a very, very strong dialect that I was not very familiar with. So, uh, my example sentence for you. Kannst du den Mann aus Zürich verstehen? Can you understand the man from Zurich? Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. I didn't understand a thing. It roughly translates as it's all Greek to me in English. Right, next up, our first word on your language learning journey. And the word is die Schnapsidee. Die Schnapsidee. Schnaps, of course, is the booze. Uh, and Idee is the idea. Uh, the idea. So, what could a Schnapsidee be? Well, we've all had that thing. We've had a few drinks and we go, I'm going to learn Korean and I'm going to be fluent in Korean and I'm going to move to Seoul and I'm going to become a K-pop star. Well, then you find yourself in Seoul six months later with no money, not speaking the language, absolutely not being a Korean pop star. And uh, then you know it was probably a bit of a schnapps idea, an idea that you had while you were drunk that seemed good at the time. Uh, and of course, learning a language is challenging. And so you might, midway through learning the language, go, oh, das war eigentlich eine Schnapsidee. So it can be used about that. I would love to know how else you could use Schnapsidee. How else do you think a Schnapsidee could be used? If your mother tells you, oh, das war eine Schnapsidee, Uh, is it an idea you can't remember, an idea that comes to you in a dream, or a stupid, not well thought out idea? Uh, very, very good. Uh, I'm loving these comments. Uh, Nadi Nad. Swiss German was a nightmare when I used to live there and was trying to learn German. You almost have to learn two Germans in Switzerland. It's not easy. Well done, everyone. Lots of correct answers. A stupid, not well thought out idea. Uh, so halfway through learning a language, you could be like, ugh, das war eine Schnapsidee. Let's move on to our next term. Verschlimmbessern. Verschlimmbessern. Uh, so, uh, bessern is to improve, and uh, schlimm means bad. So, verschlimmbessern, it kind of sounds like you're saying, making worse, making better. That's what the verb sort of sounds like as a direct translation. Making worse, making better. So what could verschlimmbessern mean? Uh, what could verschlimmbessern mean? Is it over-practicing? Making something even worse when you try and correct it? Or the feeling that no matter how hard you try, you aren't progressing? What could verschlimmbessern mean? Overpracticing, making something even worse when you try and correct it, or the feeling that no matter how hard you try, you aren't progressing. Uh, so I'm referring, of course, to the stage in a language where you've gotten a little bit better, but you're just not sure of yourself. And you say something and you're like, oh, I don't know if that was right. Let me say something again. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, I don't know if that was right. Let me try something again. Blah, blah, blah. And every time you try and correct yourself, you only make it worse. I always did this with written language. I would write a letter and I'd be like, that doesn't look right. Let's make it shorter. And then before I knew it, it didn't make any more sense. Verschlimmbessern, the idea of trying to, making something worse whilst trying to improve it. Verschlimmbessern. Next up, we have das Fremdschämen. So I want you to imagine you're in the stage of language learning where Do you know what? It's starting to come together. You're starting to understand things, but you start noticing that there are people a little bit further behind on their language learning journey, a little bit further behind than you are. And so you and another friend who are both learning German are at, uh, at a hotel and you leave the reception and your friend says to the receptionist, Gute Nacht. Gute Nacht. Now you know it should have been Gute Nacht. Gute Nacht. And your friend said Gute Nacht. Good naked instead of good night. So what could Fremdschämen mean? Fremdschämen. Fremd means uh, either sort of foreign or external. 
Shaman means to uh, be embarrassed or to feel shame. So, is it to be embarrassed by memories from your past? Feeling embarrassed about missing the obvious? Or feeling embarrassed or cringing at someone's mistake or action? Uh, Fremdschämen. Let's see. Yes, well done, everyone. 100% correct answers. Uh, Fremdschämen. The idea is secondhand embarrassment. Seeing someone else do something and going, ooh, cringe. We've all been there when learning a language, when you know what's right, but you see someone make the mistakes that you used to make. Next up on our language learning journey, you're getting pretty fluent now. You're getting pretty, pretty good. And so the word we're going to look at is der Treppenwitz. Der Treppenwitz. So we've got two words in there that it's made out of. Die Treppe, die Treppe, and der Witz. Der Witz. Der Treppenwitz. So I want you to imagine you're at a party and someone says something that puts you down a little bit. And uh, you're not sure exactly what to say straight away. So that's my clue. What do we think a Treppenwitz could be? Is it a perfect comeback that you came up with too late? A joke that you tell at a party in a staircase? Or a joke that no one around you understands? What is a Treppenwitz? I've just seen uh, Geraldine. Oh, we have the same thing in French. I did see this. I saw this in my research. Uh, we have the same thing in French. And actually, the German word comes from the French. Very interesting. Um, let's see. Most of you have got this right, actually. Uh, a Treppenwitz. Not easy. So a Treppenwitz, the idea behind it is it's a joke or a comeback that you come up with on the stairs on your way out of the party on your way home already. Uh, der Treppenwitz. Oh, no, I should have said this. That guy said something rude to me, and I should have said, shut up. <laughs> that could be a Treppenwitz. Of course, it would be probably something a bit smarter than shut up. But, uh, <laughs> dear Treppenwitz. Okay, we've only got a couple left to go. So let's uh, enjoy these last few language learning terms we're going to uh, learn. Ein Brett vor einem Kopf haben oder auf dem Schlauch stehen. Ein Brett vor einem Kopf haben oder auf dem Schlauch stehen. Now this is the stage of languages where we are very, very competent. And most days we feel pretty, pretty fluent. And then one day you just have ein Brett vor einem Kopf oder du stehst auf dem Schlauch. Uh, der Schlauch is a hose or das Brett is a board. So these two expressions roughly translate as having a board in front of your head or standing on a hose. And this is the feeling of just, it's not quite clicking today. It's not quite working. Your brain is stuck. You really, uh, your brain just isn't quite there. And I feel learning a language is, uh, is, a, is kind of, you know, you have good days and you have bad days. And sometimes it's just the case that you have ein Brett vorm Kopf. So I would love to know, have you ever had ein Brett vor dem Kopf when speaking a new language? Have you ever had ein Brett vor dem Kopf when speaking a new language? Uh, I know that I've had this where like, you know, I'm like, I know this word, I know this word. Why can I not remember it? Uh, ein Brett vor dem Kopf uh, haben. Most of you are saying yes all the time. I've got a couple of people who've said no, never. I remember words very easily. But I, I certainly have that feeling like, oh, I cannot think of the word today. It's just not happening. Uh, so these are all of the terms about the frustrations of language learning. Um, and whilst I reveal to you the last word that we're going to learn, I would love you to think about which of these experiences you relate to. And I would love you to get ready to tell me about them because I will be asking you the question. So have a little pre-think. But my last word is die Vorfreude. Die Vorfreude. Uh, vor means before and die Freude means joy. Die Freude. Vorfreude. Um, and I would love to know if you can work out from those two words maybe what Vorfreude means. What could 
Vorfreude mean? The joy you experience when looking forward to something lovely, the relief of getting something over with, or doing things you enjoy when you should be working on something. Doing things you enjoy when you should be working on something. What do we think Vorfreude could mean? Um, and Inda has written something in the chat, and this might be coming up. So uh, have a little sneak peek in the chat if you want to see what we might say right at the end of the stream. Very, very good. People have said the joy of experiencing, the joy of anticipation, the joy you experience when looking forward to something. And this is how I feel about languages. I think when you're learning them, it's frustrating, it's complicated, you run into brick walls, but ultimately there is a joy in knowing one day I'm going to go into that shop and speak to that man in fluent German and it's not going to be as scary as it is now. So you feel Vorfreude. Uh, and as Inder very wisely said in the chat, Vorfreude ist die schönste Freude. Vorfreude ist die schönste Freude. Uh, the, this joy of anticipation is the most beautiful kind of joy. And I agree. I think, you know, that's for me the joy of language learning. So I would love to know which of these experiences do you relate to the most? Pop it in the chat. I'll give you a few seconds. I'll just run through them again one more time so you can hear them. We had Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Die Schnapsidee. Die Schnapsidee. Glug, glug. Uh, verschlimmbessern. Verschlimmbessern. Uh, das Fremdschämen. Oh, cringe. <laughs> das Fremdschämen. So now you'll know not to say Gute Nacht. You'll always say Gute Nacht. Uh, der Treppenwitz. Der Treppenwitz. Uh, ein Brett vor dem Kopf haben oder auf dem Schlauch stehen. And die Vorfreude. Die Vorfreude. So I'm getting a few answers here. Someone said definitely Fremdschämen. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of schnapps ED answers, so a lot of people have know that feeling of uh, of being of thinking you've got a great idea and then it not being that great. Uh, Vorfreude, that's what I like to see. Ein Brett vor dem Kopf haben, very very good. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Someone has said. Uh, so absolutely, these are fantastic answers. I'm glad that some of them relate to your language experience. Uh, Someone just said, ich verstehe nur Bahnhof on the regular. <laughs> Trust me, it's not, as, uh, it's not as unique as you think. I think we've all felt that. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and we'll see each other on the next stream, I hope. So uh, thanks for watching. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Ich freue mich schon. Also bis dann, ihr Lieben. Tschüss. All right, and we're back in the room. <laughs> Thank you very much to Max, that was amazing. Um, I hope our Expolingua audience enjoyed that. Let me know in the chat how you, how you found it. Um, those of you who did download the app, uh, I'd encourage you to check out the rest of our content. Uh, we have the same thing, um, not just for German, but also French, Spanish, and English. Um, so go in, have a look at the content. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, and if you come back 24 hours from now, there'll actually be a standalone quiz related directly to the stream Max just did. So you can test your knowledge again. Um, it's a really, really cool feature. So you should definitely check that out. So that just about rounds off our talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for attending. Uh, I do believe there will be a Q&A session. Um, so I'd love to welcome, welcome you there. If you've got questions or if you just want to have a chat, um, I'll be hanging out there for a while. I think Max is going to join as well. So if you want to say hi to him, uh, do join us. I believe this has just been posted in the chat of, uh, of this session. So uh, with that, I say thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you at the Q&A.